Good evening and welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. There still are bish uh, Bishop's Lenten pastoral letter at the back of the church. Please pick one up on the way home. People in ministry are asked to check the schedule for Holy Week, which is posted in the ministry room. You are also reminded to bring a bell to the Easter Vigil and Easter Sunday liturgies. We still need someone to pick up the holy oils at the Chrism Mass, which will be held in New Lizard this year on Tuesday evening. Please let myself or Monsignor Pat know if you can attend. Today's liturgy celebrates Palm Sunday, and our Mass is being offered for Pat Bamford by the estate and for Janine Omen by Mike and Nilde Fiorino. Please stand to welcome our presider, Monsignor Pat. The King of Glory comes and may shout rejoicing. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the King of Glory? How shall we call him? Is Emmanuel the promised of ages? The King of Glory comes and may shout rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In all of Galilee, in city or village, he calls among his people pure. The King of Glory comes and may shout rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus. Nope, sorry, my apologies. This is Palm Sunday. We do things differently. Okay, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable work. Today we gathered together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. That is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. We are going to leave the palms here, but before the end of Mass, somebody is going to break, bring them to the back of the church, and you can take some on your way out. Another marvelous example of COVID at its finest. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, 
the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? The disciples told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. The King of glory comes and they shall rejoice and Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the King of glory? How shall we call him? Is Emmanuel the promised of ages? The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In all of Galilee, in city or village, he falls among his people purely. The King of glory comes and nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Sing the Son of Savior, the Father, in all of Galilee was never another. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My I, God, I, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their head. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hand and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. My, my God, why have you forsaken me? They divide my clothes among themselves. 
and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. My, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. My God, my God, why have you forsaken? The second reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Please stand. If you have trouble standing for the whole narrative, don't be the martyr. Sit down if you get too tired. If you have a book with you, a missile or some sort, you are invited to read along with us and, and share the parts that are marked F. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said... While Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For his ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? 
He has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you. And you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body be beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make the preparation for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asked, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all became deserters, I will not. Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet, 
not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false wit testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands and make it in three days I will build another who made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the, po of the power, coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still see witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophecy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, 
you were also with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, at the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with him? Then you call the king of the Jews. They shouted back. Crucify him. Pilate asked them. Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, 
shaking their heads and saying, uh, You would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself. Come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ of the King of Israel come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, and put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joses and Sal Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph, then Joseph brought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Please be seated. Now, one of my 
One of my siblings who watches this mass on Sunday mornings took it upon themselves to phone me this week when they observed that this was Palm Sunday. And the, the conversation went like this. It's Palm Sunday this week. Do? And I said, yes, I'm very glad that you are aware of this fact. And they said, the gospel's really long. Two points for you. I'm very glad that you are aware of this fact. He says, surely, no, surely to goodness, you're not going to have a homily. I said to that person, and you were doing so well. So I hope my sibling is watching. This is not the time to go up and get snacks. One of the things about the events that take place in Holy Week is that they, are, they take place on so many levels. To start off with, we know that they say a lot about God in general, the events and how they transpired. We know they say a lot about Jesus. We know it says a lot about the human condition. And if we really pay attention, we have to be honest and say, they probably say something about us as well. Now, no, I'm not going to cover all those aspects. But I'll cover one. When we're born, as we slowly age as a, as a baby, one of the primary concerns that we have is getting attention. And we know that we know early how to get it. The first and primary method is crying. Then we know, we see the positive reaction that people have when we laugh, so we laugh some more. Or we do things that we know people have watch. And that is a normal thing for a child or baby to do because they want attention. Because they know if they get attention, the other needs will be looked after. But if you're not paying attention to me, then I can't get these other things I want. As a child gets a little older, they want approval. And they want it primarily from their parents and the adults in their home situation. And it's a sad thing when we as adults sometimes withhold that approval because they are so desperate to have it. And they'll do strange things to get approval. And if they can't, they'll go back to trying to get attention. And what they don't always differentiate is between positive attention and negative attention. As far as they're concerned, attention is attention. Anybody want to argue with me so far? Then we go into that realm of explicit grace that is called teenagerhood. They we at that age develop a different sort of mentality. We still want attention. We still want approval. But we're more concerned about having it from our peers. We want their approval. And if mom and dad don't approve, that's almost a bonus. We don't yearn for their approval nearly as much as we yearn for peers. Now, here's the catch. We're supposed to graduate from all that. We're supposed to go to the point where we can become our own attention givers. That we, we can become our own people who give ourselves approval and that we learn to accept ourselves. That's the goal of adulthood. But we don't all get there. And some of this stuff that we, we used in childhood comes back, doesn't it? 
We go for attention, good or bad. We go for approval, good or bad. And we go yearning for acceptance. And we'll do strange things in order to be liked, in order to be approved of. And we yearn, as part of that, for popularity. I want to be liked, I want to be popular, and I want to be in charge, at least of myself. If I can be put in charge of something else and I can have control, so much the better. And we push this all into adulthood. And those desires tint what we do. And they oftentimes determine our course of action. Now, where am I going with this? Jesus was human. And he was raised to have those same things. And he saw them in human beings. He comes parading into the city in, in Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And his approval rating is sky high. You got people singing him songs, laying branches before him, and quite excited about his presence. And the apostles and his disciples who accompany him, they're happy. This is finally what they've been looking for. They're, this kingdom that Jesus spoke of is now going to take place, and they are going to be the top dogs in this kingdom. So they're happy. They're going to be those people who get a lot of attention. They're going to get approval. They're going to, to get acceptance. And they're going to be popular. And yet we know that Jesus doesn't take that route. It was laying right in front of him. It was right in front of him, and he had the opportunity to take that route. But in order to take that route, he would have had to do what God did, the Father did not want. He would have had to do what was not the right thing to do. Instead of going for all those things, Jesus chose to do the right thing. And we know the cost of that. We know what it cost him. He didn't care that his own best friends did not approve. He was a little frightened, like many of us would be, about the path, because even at one point says to God, there must be another way, right? But if there isn't, it's okay. I will do it anyway. How many times in our lives when we've had less of a test, when we've had less of a push, have we taken the easy road? How many times have we done things to be popular, even maybe when we knew they weren't right? How many times have we sacrificed our values and the will of God for power or popularity? How many times have we failed to follow Jesus' example. He showed us this is the right way of doing things. How many times have we made that example be in vain? If Jesus had chosen to be popular, if Jesus had chosen to have power, if Jesus had chosen just to be liked, would we have been saved? Would our sins have been washed away? No. Let us pray that this example that Jesus gave us 
will be our guide. And that regardless of the cost, regardless of the price, we, like Jesus, will always choose to do the right thing. Our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. In this time of the Lord's Passion, when Christ offered prayers and supplications to his Father with loud cries and tears, let us humbly beseech God that in answer to his son's reverent submission, he may in mercy hear our prayers also. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, living presence of God's c compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic and world leaders, builders of a just society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special needs of all who suffer in any way this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community of faith gathered here today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask your prayers in a special way for Mr. Roman Gazala of our parish who is very ill. Please keep him and his family in your prayers. And for our pastoral associate, Maureen Graham Shevchuk, who at last time I heard this morning was still in the hospital. Uh, Maureen is suffering from anemia and a possible diagnosis of, what did I say? The fluid builds up around the heart. Uh, congestive heart failure. So please keep Maureen in your prayers. Be present, O Lord, to your people at prayer, so that what they do not have the confidence or presumption to ask, they may obtain by the merits of your Son's passion, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The first proclamation, the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the, the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sarah, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and Anthony of Padua, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins from the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and soul shall be healed.
Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed the tree? Why me, Lord? What have I ever done to deserve even of the pleasures I've known? Tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth loving? Or the kindness you've shown. Lord, help me, Jesus. I've wasted it. So help me, Jesus. I know what I am. Now that I know that I've needed you so help me, Jesus. My 
my soul's in your hand. Try me, Lord, if you think there's a way. I can try to repay all I've taken from you. Maybe, Lord, I can show someone else what I've been through myself on my way back to you. Lord, help me, Jesus. I've wasted it, so help me, Jesus. I know what I am. Now that I know that I've needed you, so help me, Jesus. My soul's in your hand. Jesus. My soul's in your hand. Now, I think most of the tickets for Easter Sunday are gone. Is anybody here on that committee? You're nodding your head? Okay. That means and Good Friday are gone. We did not have tickets for Holy Thursday or the Easter Vigil because we usually have lots of room there. So those are still that are too open. They're still open. Because I can't see us filling them up, but I, that would be really nice. That would be really nice. Uh, secondly, the palms are at the back of the church. And because of this COVID thing, normally we've seen people when they go to the palms, they pick up, they sort through one that till they get one that they like. Touch one, it's yours. Okay? You know that... Uh, like that they do in the stores, touch it, you keep it, same thing. Please don't go sorting through it. It's not good health practices right now. So take one and be happy with that. If you want to take a second one, uh, but I'm at the stage where I don't really care. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And have a great Holy Week. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. He will release me from the nets of sinful men. He will protect me from their wicked hands. Beneath the shadow of his wings I will rejoice to find a dwelling oh, I, I, I place secure. It. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the 
Yeah. 